I'm Larry Berg. You and I share a common love for dogs, but we don't always love the way they behave. In this program, I will share with you many of the dog training techniques that I have developed and applied over the last 20 years as a professional dog trainer. I will show you how to motivate your dog to develop respect for you, to please you instead of just himself, and to obey you when you want him to and not just when he feels like it. I will be addressing five commands which will allow you to control your dog in any situation. The commands are sit, stay, down, come, and heal. But first, let's look at how man's best friend achieved his status, where he's come from, and what makes him tick. The dog, developed from wolf-like creatures, was the first animal domesticated by man to assist him in hunting, guarding his home and family, and sharing the load. Both early man and wolf hunted in groups or packs and probably oftentimes found themselves hunting the same prey. Man observed that the wolf had keener senses of smell and hearing, as well as the abilities to detect the slightest motion and outrun the swiftest of men. Our ancestors realized that having these animals as members of their human pack would make their lives more productive. Thus, early dogs, although more wolf-like than dog-like, were taken in as part of the family. The extreme variations in the modern dog occurred over the ages because man found that through selective breeding, he could create dogs of different sizes, shapes, abilities, and personalities to better suit his needs. In order to ensure that the dog of early days carried out their functions when required, man had to get them to perceive him as top dog of this newly combined pack. Nothing has changed much in the 15,000-year-old relationship. In order for your dog to follow your commands, he must develop a respect for you that will motivate him to obey you. To succeed in this subtle tug of war, the first thing you should have is the proper equipment. There are two different types of collars that can be used to begin to train your dog. A buckle collar or a training collar. To fit well, a buckle collar should just fit snugly around your dog's neck and a training collar should just fit over his head. If your dog is under two years of age, it's important to check the fit every so often to make sure the collar isn't getting too tight as he grows. To put on the buckle collar, hold the collar like so. Bring it around her neck and buckle it behind her head. Test it to be sure it's loose enough to move freely around your dog's neck, but tight enough to prevent it from slipping over his head. If your dog's a squirmer, first adjust the collar to a larger size and slide it over her head. Then all you have to do is cinch it tighter for the correct fit. To assemble the training collar, Hold the rings like so. Lower your right hand. Then lower the chain through the ring in your right hand and let go. With your left hand, grip the chain attached to the ring you are holding in your right hand. Release your right hand from the ring and place that hand under your dog's chin. Slide the collar on with your left hand. Check the path of the chain by standing to the right of your dog. The path of the chain should be from the leash, through the ring, over his neck, and around. In the over position, the collar will relax automatically when the leash is relaxed. Your dog should wear a collar at all times. It's not only a constant reminder of your control over him, but with an ID tag attached, it greatly increases the chance of his return if lost. I'd like to make a recommendation here. Many people like to put their dog's name and their address on the ID tag. Don't. It makes it easier for the finder to endear himself to your dog if he knows your dog's name, and it tells criminals that your home isn't being protected by your dog at this time. Reward if found, please call, and your phone number is enough. If your dog wears more than one tag, let's say her ID tag and a rabies shot tag, tape them together so that the sound won't possibly distract and annoy her. The next piece of equipment is the leash. Training leashes are manufactured from many different materials, but the best is leather. 
A six foot length is adequate, but the newer seven foot length is proven to be superior because it gives you more freedom of movement for the down, stay, and come commands and allows your dog to relax in comfort away from you when he's in the down position. Attach the leash to the collar like so. During training, your dog will learn to work from your left side. The reason we do this is that early man primarily hunted with dogs, and since right-handedness is a predominant trait, weapons were carried in the right hand, and the dogs were controlled from the left side. Therefore, it became a tradition. The last piece of equipment is something you always have with you, your voice. Okay. You should consider it your most important tool in training because ultimately you want your dog to obey you without the leash. Come you do there. not Come have to there. yell commands at your dog. As you hey. already know, Jake. a dog's ability to Jake. hear is far superior Jake. to ours. In training, you will use three levels of voice, the command, the praise, and the correction. If I were to ask you right now, what does SIT spell, what would your answer be? That's right, sit. That's the tone of voice you should use to command your dog. Not sit, or sit, sit, sit. Just sit. Try it again. Sit. Good. You hear that? I just demonstrated the praise level, which is higher and happier and expresses an emotion of pleasure. When you say good boy or good girl, you shouldn't just say it. You should mean it and feel it. Say it. Good boy. Good girl. Good viewer. Last but not least is the correction level. It should be somewhat deeper and firmer and express an emotion of displeasure. Again, you do not have to yell at your dog. Just say no. Now we're ready to start on the first command. When I meet dogs and their owners for the first time, most of them tell me my dog already knows what sit means, but obeys only when he feels like it, and rarely the first time. To begin this lesson, I will assist those of you whose dogs don't have a clue as to what the word sit means. With the leash gathered in one hand, Place your free hand, palm up, under his chin, and grasp his collar with your fingertips. Say the word sit as you elevate your dog's chin. This motion will guide his rear back and down. Some dogs may resist at first for a few seconds, but the instant you feel him start to relax and lower to sit, praise him. Praise him the instant he starts to sit, not after his rear makes contact with the ground. This is Good because boy. by starting to Good sit, boy. he is already demonstrating his willingness to Practice obey and boy. please you. Okay. After doing it a few Good times, your Good dog will boy. definitely understand right what the word Good sit boy. means. Good boy, Rocky. Don't say your dog's name first before the sit command, because you don't want to always have to get his attention first before giving him a command. His name will only precede motion commands, such as heel and come. Let's Heel. Good boy. Hello. Good boy. Good boy, Pedro. But for stationary commands, such as sit, stay, and down, you say one word only. Sit. Good boy. Stay. Down. Now that your dog knows what sit means, let's get him in the habit of obeying you the first time you tell him. The sit command is an isolated command, has limited practical use, but learning it will cause something much more important to happen. He will start to develop an attitude of respect towards you. This is the correct way to hold the leash for training purposes. While standing with your dog to your left, put your right thumb through the handle. Depending on the size of your dog, Place your left hand, palm down, somewhere between one and three feet from the swivel snap. The bigger the dog, the shorter the distance. The excess should be placed back once over your right thumb so that you or your dog don't get tangled in it. Now relax both arms at your sides. If your arms are tense, you will not be able to effectively correct him and you'll be constantly drawing your dog's attention to his being on a leash. 
you should just look as if you were just standing in a relaxed position without a leash in your hands. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. You notice that I did not pet Rocky when I praised him. Because when you put your hands on most dogs, you're initiating a playtime attitude and can stimulate them to jump up on you. It's like saying, I'm putting my paws on you, so it's okay for you to put your paws on me. That's not to say you can't pet your dog at all. Save it for after the training session, when school's out. Also, petting only works as a reward if you're near your dog. Verbal praise works at any distance. Come Don't on, use food on, as a, a reward. Come on, let's get a treat. You want your dog to respond to you, not the treat come that on, would follow. Treat. Imagine what would treat. happen if you didn't have any dog treats with you one day, or, on, heaven go. forbid, not your dog's favorite. Now, right? Or what if he wasn't hungry? Go Obedience boy. would go right out the window. Come on, treat. Want to go to park? Sit. No. Good boy. Did you see me snap the leash and say the word no at the same time when Duke didn't respond to the command? That was a correction. If your dog does not sit, don't keep repeating sit, 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 sit. If you do, sit. you're telling him that he doesn't have to obey the first time you sit. tell him, or not at all if he doesn't sit. feel like it. So correct him for not obeying the command by snapping sit. the leash as you say the word no. no. Sit. Good boy. Use the no. mildest correction that achieves the desired result, yet strong no. enough to make him want to avoid it. Sit. Good boy. Sit. If your dog doesn't sit after the correction, no. repeat the word sit again, and then sit. correct him again if necessary. Keep up no. the pattern of sit, no, sit, sit. no, sit, no, no, until he obeys. Good boy. Good boy, Bo. Good boy. It could be five, 10, or 20 times, but eventually your dog will give in, and he will soon realize through your persistence that you intend to be more determined and stubborn than he is. Initially, your dog might obey you only to avoid getting corrected, but in the long run, he will learn that by obeying you, he will please you, thus earning your praise, the best motivator there is. Remain calm and no. relaxed even if he jumps up Sit. or puts his paw over the leash in no. an effort to control you. Losing your temper Sit. will show your dog that he can control no. you. Sit. No. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Let's good change boy. the pace a bit by walking no. in between okay. sits. Say his name in a happy tone of voice as you start to walk leaving sufficient slack in the leash good so that boy. your dog has an opportunity to start That's moving good. when he hears his That's name before getting pulled up by the leash. Good if he gets up and starts good to walk boy. with you when you say good his name boy. without any assistance from the leash, praise him good because boy. he deserves it. Good boy. If she does not get up when you say her name, don't stand there and jerk her, Agent. otherwise your dog may confuse it no. with a correction and resist. Continue walking forward, Asian. keeping your hands at your sides, firmly in place on the leash, so that she has no choice but to get up and begin moving with you. You are the leader. Your dog must follow you. Good boy. Good when it's necessary boy. to change directions, only make right turns for now, which will maintain Good or return boy. you to the lead position and prevent you from becoming Good entangled with him. Good boy, very good. That's a good boy. Good boy. There are several situations that may occur at any time during training. Here are some of them with appropriate reactions so that you can remain in control at all times. Does your dog sit automatically when you stop walking? Girl, if good, so, girl. praise her. She is good anticipating girl. what you want and trying to please you. Sit. Does your dog sit and then get up immediately? No. That's Good okay. Boy. Sit doesn't mean stay. You tell him to sit and instead he lies down. Sit. Correct him the instant his elbows no. touch the ground. Sit. Then lift Good upwards boy. while saying Good sit. Boy, then praise Good him. Boy. You come to a stop and your dog no. jumps up on you. Use the leash correction. Sit. Good boy. Your dog sits, then lies sit. down. That's Good okay. Girl. Sit Good doesn't girl. mean stay. This completes the first lesson. Before you go on to the stay command, 
Practice the sit command at least once a day for about a week. Do approximately 12 sit sequences per session. The session should only be ended after a successful sit, one that doesn't require any correction at all. You always want to end the practice session on a positive note with your dog demonstrating a cooperative and willing attitude. And while you are praising him after the final sit, you should also pet him. This tells him that the session is over and he's off duty. While you are petting and praising your dog, remove the leash if you are in an appropriate area. At this point in the training, I do not advise giving commands with the leash removed. The reason for this is that even if he obeys you nine out of ten times, when he disobeys you on the tenth time, he will realize that you can't correct him when the leash is off. By giving him commands only when he's on the leash, he will get into the habit of obeying you. Then after a few weeks, you can remove the leash and he will still follow the habit you have taught him. We know how well your dog stays in one place when he's sleeping. Now it's time to teach him to stay when he's awake. At this point in your dog's training, the word stay is going to mean remain where I tell you to until I return. She'll learn to stay in one position regardless of where she is and what's going on around her. Five minutes and no more is a reasonable amount of time to ask your dog to sit in one place. Beyond that, you would use the down command down. that I'll be teaching you later on. But for now, you should have your dog stay for at least three minutes while practicing so that he learns to relax for an extended period of time and concentrate on what you want him to do until you release him. Before beginning teaching your dog to stay, or for any subsequent Good command, girl. start by reviewing what she's already been Good taught. Girl. It will make well, it understood to your dog that it's work time, and it will put her in the right frame of mind to learn something new. We're going to start by Good doing at girl. least three sit sequences, and Let's don't go. rush through it. Once she's sat three or more times, then you can start Good by girl. teaching your dog to stay. stay. You will only ask your dog to stay one set of every three or more sits, because if you make her stay every time she sits, she's going to think that sit means stay. Remember, training should stimulate your dog to sit. think and distinguish the difference between words and not just tones stay. of voice. He should not obey just by habit. Sit. He should obey you because he's learned to tune into what you want him to Down. do at that moment. Move your left hand toward your dog's face, with your palm facing him like so as you say stay. the word stay. Remember, what does S-T-A-Y spell? Stay. Keep that tone of voice. Throughout training, I will teach you hand signals with some of the verbal commands, but I really want you to focus on the use of your voice. First, the dog hears a lot better than he sees. Second, she may not be looking in your Good direction girl. when you give her a hand Stay. signal, but she's always in a position to hear you. After telling him to stay, Stay, walk away on your right foot first in any direction. Why the right? When you're moving with your dog, walking or healing, your dog is taught to follow your left foot. You don't want him moving now. Don't Good hang girl. around your dog after telling her to stay. Good stay girl. means you stay, stay here. I have someplace else to go and I don't want you following me. Without looking directly at your dog, walk about a leash length away, allowing for a little slack. There should be no tension, but don't let the leash go so loose that it touches the ground. Otherwise, you won't be able to effectively correct her the instant she breaks the command. Keep your hands at waist level and adjust the length of the leash as you move around. This way, you will always be in a position to correct your dog the instant he moves. The first time your dog breaks the command, and he will, correct him. Then shorten no. the leash and return him back to where he was, and tell him... Sit. Good boy. Stay. Then move away again. It is critical, once you've corrected your dog for moving, no. that you shorten the leash and return him to where he was staying. If he gets closer to where he wants to be, and you return him to where he was staying, he'll be less likely to break again. Stay means stay where I want you to, not where you feel like staying. And once you've told him to sit and he starts sit. to, Good don't boy. forget the praise. 
not only are you praising him for his sit at this time, but you're letting him know that he's still a good dog, even though he did the wrong thing. Now give him the hand signal and voice command to stay. Stay. The sequence if he gets up is no, sit, good boy, stay. No, sit, good boy, stay. If he lies down while staying, he's saying to you, okay, I'll stay, but I might as well make myself comfortable. At this point in training, this is not acceptable. Correct him the instant his elbows touch the ground, but don't react no. until they actually touch. Sit, good boy, stay. Your dog may slouch down, but not lie down. Even if she's slouching, she is still sitting. We're not trying to teach her good posture here. But if he decides to lie down, the instant his elbows touch, correct him. Then shorten the leash no. and lift him back up as you say sit. Sit. Praise Good him. Boy. Then tell him stay. to stay again. The series is no, sit, good boy, stay. Whether he walks away or lies down, the correction is the same. No, sit, good boy, stay. I told you to avoid eye contact while your dog is staying. Your eyes are very potent tools. Staring at your dog may intimidate him or always cause him to feel he needs to be watched in order to remain under your command. Just watch him from the corner of your eye so that he's not aware of it. You only have to see if he's breaking your command. To experience what I'm saying to you, look this dog in the eyes. Now look at the leaf on the ground. You can still see him, but it appears to him that you're not watching him. If he looks at you, he should not see you looking at him. While he's staying, he may try to get your attention by barking and staring at you. Ignore him. Don't even look his way. He's only trying to control you. The only time you should make eye contact is no. the instant he breaks while you're simultaneously correcting Sit. him. Good boy. Stay. Stay. Don't keep on repeating the word stay. stay. You want stay. one command only stay. to get the job done. Unless his rear is actually coming up off no. the ground or her elbows touch the ground to lie down, no. say and do nothing, even if she appears to be getting ready to break. Also, don't praise him while he's staying. Praising him is telling him the command is over so he can move. And you wouldn't want to keep on having to praise him every time he resisted a distraction. Let's say you've decided that your dog should remain in the stay position for three minutes, and he's goofed up at two minutes and 59 seconds. The clock does not have to go back to zero. Repeat the sequence, no, sit, good boy, stay and then make him stay for at least another minute so that he understands that he must stay until you say he can move. Once you decide that he has stayed long enough, how do you release him? The object of the stay command at this point in his training is that your dog must remain in one spot, sitting up until you return to him to release him from the command. If, for example, you keep calling him over to you to end the stay, he will be anticipating moving rather than learning to relax on your command. There are two ways to end or finish the stay command, either by simply stepping back to his right side Good and praising boy. him, or the traditional way, by walking around him to get there. To finish it in the traditional manner, approach your dog holding the leash above the spot you want to end up in, and walk around him in a counterclockwise fashion. Come to a stop with your left heel next to his front Good right boy. foot, relax, and praise him. By finishing the stay in this manner, your presence very close to, behind, and around your dog adds distractions that he should learn to accept. Good boy, good boy, dude. If he gets up as you try to finish, correct no. him. Sit, good boy, stay, and move away again for one more minute before attempting to finish it again, so that he understands until you praise him the command is still in effect. Once you praise him, he can move if Good he wants boy. to. Good After you've succeeded Good in finishing your first stay, do three more sits, Good. and on the third sit, try another stay.
Good boy. Duke, come on. Let's go. Good boy. Good boy. Duke, come on. Let's go. Come on. Sit. No. Good boy. Stay. If you're training your dog in a quiet area, you may want to create distractions yourself. But remember, don't praise him if he ignores it. If he does get up, correct him. No. Making sure you've returned him to the spot where he was. Sit. If he keeps getting up, keep using the same object Stay. until he learns to ignore it. Don't repeat stay just before you throw the object, otherwise you're saying to your dog you lack confidence in his ability to obey you, and you don't want to have to keep saying stay every time you anticipate a distraction. Stay means I want to tell you once, and no matter what distractions occur, I don't want you to move. Now that you've succeeded in having your dog stay through all kinds of distractions, do three more sits, then one more stay. On this day, do it without adding distractions. If you're going to distract him every time you make him stay, then the distractions just become a reminder that he's supposed to be staying. If you just stand still, doing nothing, you're forcing him to concentrate on the stay. After your third stay, not only praise her, but pet her, and if appropriate, turn her loose. Lay down, McDuff, sit. Lay down, lay down. Be a good boy, lay down. Come on, lay down, lay down. I said lay down, come on, lay down. Come on, lay down. Lay down, please, come on. Lay down, please. Lay down. Come on, be a good boy and lay down. I'll give you five bucks. How about a chocolate candy bar? Lay down. Lay down. Come on, lay down. Lay down, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. down. Lay down, McDuff. McDuff, lay down. Lay down. The down command will not only mean lie down to your dog, it will mean lie down, stay there, and relax until you say so. Once you and your dog have perfected this command, you will be able to eat dinner, watch TV, entertain guests, and generally relax in peace. If your dog doesn't sit and stay by this time in all situations, don't go any further. Go back and practice. I cannot stress enough how difficult the down command can be to accomplish. What makes it so difficult is that it is asking your dog to totally submit to you and place himself in the most vulnerable position. It's a fact and there's no way of disguising it, and you really wouldn't want to. The submissive aspect will greatly enhance his acceptance and acknowledgement that you are the leader and the vulnerability aspect will further enhance his trust in you. He must learn to accept your ability to dominate or control him when necessary. When I say dominate, I don't mean reducing him to a cowering, intimidated wimp. I mean you must establish that you are above him in the packing order. To review, when you were learning the stay command, you were taught to do at least three sits for every stay, with at least three stays being accomplished in your practice session. This was to ensure that your dog knew that sit and stay were two distinct commands. For the same reason, once your dog learns what the word down means, he will be asked to obey the down command only once in an entire practice session. A sample practice session including the down will be as follows. Three sits and a stay, three sits and a stay to a down, then three more sits to a stay. But before we do a practice session, your dog must learn what down means. Repetition and consistency are important to accomplishing your dog's understanding and obeying this command. So for now, every sit will become a stay, and every stay will become a down. So while he's first learning to obey it, the lesson will go like this. Sit, stay, down. Sit, stay, down. 
sit, stay, down, until your dog successfully obeys the command. To begin making your dog aware of what down means, have your dog stay and allow one full minute to pass before proceeding. If she lies down within this minute, correct her like you did when you were teaching her to stay. Now, sit. Good girl. Stay. Do not attempt the down command right now, as it will confuse her, because you would be correcting her for something, then asking her to do it. So wait for the next stay before teaching the down command. After your dog has completed a successful stay for one minute, approach your dog from the rear or side and stand within one foot of him with your feet pointing in the direction of his ears. Gather the leash into your right hand only. While looking down at your dog, say the word down as you bring your left hand up down. and then return it back to your side again. Even if he's not looking at you, saying down as your hand rises allows him to down. look back and see your hand returning to your side to confirm the command. Now place your left foot on the leash and slowly down. step down as you are saying the word down for the second time. At first you may meet with some resistance, but continue in a slow steady descent until your foot reaches the down. floor. This should guide your dog into a down position. If it doesn't, Remain in this position for about 10 down. seconds, by which time most dogs will have lied down. If your dog hasn't, place your left hand by his shoulders down. and gently and evenly push down while saying the word down. Now remove your foot from the leash and walk away. Once your dog is in the down position, as much as you may want to, do not praise him. That's like telling him to get up and go when he's supposed to lie down and stay there. Don't get frustrated if your dog doesn't accept the idea of down immediately. While it probably only took minutes to achieve your first sit and stay commands, it may take a half an hour or more to achieve your first down. If he gets up before you finish it, correct no. him. Sit. Good boy. Stay. Then return her to the down the same way you did before. Down. It's not necessary to wait the one minute before returning your dog down because she was already down. If he breaks and you've corrected no. him and he Sit. lies back down on his own, assume that he's re-obeying your command. Once he has remained down for a length of time, finish it like we did with the stay command either by stepping up to his side or the traditional way by going around her. Either way, stop with your left heel in line with her right elbow. Then look down at your dog and praise her. Good girl, Ralph. Good girl. Now say her name and walk. Ralph, come on, let's go. Good girl. When you come to a stop, have him sit and Good stay boy. again. Stay. Then move away for another minute. After the minute, return to your dog and tell him down again down. and relax. If he doesn't lie down, place your left foot on the leash again as you repeat the command. Down. If he still resists, down. use your hand to guide him down again. Down. Until he's showing little resistance to lying down with your foot and you no longer have to use your hand, continue this sequence. Down. 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 After your dog lies down the first time without hand assistance, do not use your hand again. Once you no longer have to use your hand, you are ready to proceed to the next step. Even if it still requires foot assistance, your dog is definitely aware at this point that when you say the word down, you expect him to lie down and stay there. At this point, your dog may be a part of a small but significant number who not only understand what down means, but will be willing to obey it. Regardless, from this point on, never assume your dog doesn't know what you are telling him to do. 
Assume he knows what you want and is resisting. Now I am going to teach you how to correct your dog for not lying down so that he eventually learns to obey you the first time that you ask him. Have your dog sit and stay. Good girl. Stay and let a minute pass. Then return and tell him down and relax down. for a few seconds. Give him time to think as he is deciding now whether or not to acknowledge you as the boss. If he lies down, relax the leash and walk away. If you tell him down. to lie down and he doesn't, snap the leash straight back with your right hand, no. simultaneously saying the word no. If he doesn't lie down after you've corrected him, place your foot on the leash and guide him down. down. So the sequence is now as follows. Down. No. Down. Continue with this sequence until he lies down before you have to guide him down with your foot. It will occur either after the command, down, or after the correction, down. No. Since your ultimate goal is to have him lie down and relax on your command, don't rush through the steps. If you do, instead of lying down and relaxing, your dog will just tense up and resist. Once you've accomplished your first successful down without the need to guide him with your foot, you can proceed to the third and final step. Have him stay. Stay. Move away and wait the minute. Then return to him and tell him down. Down. If he doesn't, correct him. No. If he still doesn't lie down, down, repeat the down, no sequence until he does. No. Down. No. If at any time during this sequence, she looks like she's going to obey you, relax. She probably will. But if he puts his paw over the leash or resists in Down. any way, he's trying to control you. No. Remain calm and concentrate on what you are doing. Down. It must be clear to your dog that you intend to stick with it until he obeys. The first few attempts will take the longest to achieve, but if you are persistent, she will learn to willingly obey your commands and Down. respect you as the leader of the pack. There's an interesting phenomenon that occurs with most dogs once this level of respect is achieved. You will position yourself to have him lie down and he will do so before you tell him to. Don't correct him. Just walk away. To review, the entire down lesson is as follows. Step one, down, to guiding him down with your foot, to guiding him down with your hand. When you can discontinue guiding him down with your hand, you can proceed with step two, down, to no, to guiding him down with your foot. When you can discontinue guiding him down with your foot, you can proceed to step three. Down, to no, to down, to no, to down, to no, until your dog lies down. As I mentioned earlier, once you've succeeded in having your dog lie down on your command, 
Your daily practice session will be as follows. Three sits and a stay. Three sits and a stay to a down. Then three more sits to a stay. This is to ensure that your dog understands that sit, stay, and down are three different commands. She should remain down for at least five minutes each time so that she learns to relax on your command. Your goal should be for her to actually fall asleep. Since he's in a comfortable position, it is not unreasonable to expect a puppy to remain down for a half an hour or an adult dog for a full hour. Of course, you don't have to remain standing all that time. Continue to maintain control of the leash so that you can correct him should he get up. You can even sit on the end of the leash so that your hands are free. While he's down, you should get up and walk around and then sit down again. We don't want him to think that just because you got up that he can as well. Although you are asking your dog to lie down only once in an entire practice session, you should begin using the commands in real life situations several times per day. If you are sitting down to dinner, watching television, entertaining guests, or preparing to engage in any activity that stimulates your dog to interfere with or annoy you, don't wait until he does and get angry at him. Take the initiative. Don't let him control you. Have him sit, stay, and down, then go about your business. But a word of caution, at this point in his training, the success of the command must be your priority. Be prepared to drop whatever you are doing if your dog breaks the command, and have him resume the down position before you go back to what you were doing. If you are consistent, in a matter of weeks, you may find your dog lying down and relaxing on his own just prior to your activity as dogs are extremely ritualistic and follow patterns frequently repeated out of habit. Payload! Good boy! Good boy! Good boy, Payload! The come command not only means head in your direction, it means come directly over to you, sit down, and relax. The command for come is not the word come. It is your dog's name and name only. Ralph! The word come will only be used if he doesn't immediately start heading in your direction when he hears his name. Toby! Come. Even if you're upset with him, you must always call him like you're inviting him to a party. Rocky! You if you sound you. angry, your dog will <gasps> most likely here. freeze in hey. place or head in another direction. You will be calling your dog initially from a stay Duke. or down position because Maggie. it contradicts what we've already taught her. By doing so, you're teaching him that when you call him, Jack. it overrides whatever he's doing at the time. He should preferably be facing away from you because the most difficult situation is to have your dog come when Willie. he's heading in the other direction. After she has stayed for one minute, go to the end of the leash and face toward your dog. Be sure there is room behind you to back up. Now sing out her name Maggie. as you back away, which should induce her to move toward you. If he Duke. doesn't, say the word come. come as the leash becomes taut while you continue to back up. The well. instant she starts in your direction, come. begin praising her and Good continue girl, to do so Good every girl. step of the way. Good girl. The praise is like a magnet that draws your dog to you. Lady. Good girl, good girl, lady, good girl. Good girl. Keep in mind to continue That's facing the location good your dog girl. started from good until girl. she's sitting near you. Turning away from your dog would probably be interpreted by her that you only wanted her to head in your direction and not come all the way. When good he does boy. approach you, good if he sits automatically, good praise boy. him. Good boy. If he good doesn't, boy. Correct him so he learns that he is expected no. to sit without being good, told. Good boy. It's important good that girl. you collect the good leash girl, so that you can good correct girl. her for not coming to you and sitting automatically. No. Sit. Good girl. Once you've completed learning the come command, 
Only call her once per practice session. But any time you take your dog out for a walk, call her whenever you choose. Maggie! Come. Good girl. Good girl. No. Sit. Good girl. The only time your dog does not have to come to you immediately is if nature calls when you do. Maggie! Uh. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> The question here is, do you walk your dog, or does he walk you? When you're out walking your dog, it's often necessary that you have total control over him, whether it be to safely cross a road, prevent him from relieving himself where he shouldn't, or controlling him on a busy sidewalk. Teaching your dog to heal is teaching him to closely follow you as the leader at your left heel. That's where the term heel comes from. The heel command will now give you two options as to how you want to walk your dog. When he's not under the command, your dog can do what he wants, lead you where he wants to go, sniff around and observe the world, and stop and relieve himself, even with some tension on the leash. However, when you command her to heal, she should learn that her priority is to concentrate on staying at your side no matter what you do, with absolutely no tension on the leash. This means that when she is healing, her only thoughts are staying with you. She should speed up or slow down as you do, change directions when you do, and stop and sit automatically when you stop. You will find that once he's accustomed to walking at heel, he will walk with you better even when he's not under the command. While stay and down define a specific space for your dog when he's stationary, heel defines a dog's space for him when he's moving. Here's a way to visualize a correct heel. Imagine a square at your side, the front end of which aligns with your left heel, that moves as you do, staying with you as you change speeds or direction. If your dog's front feet are within the square, he's healing. If he steps out of it in any direction, he's not. Like all other commands, don't tell him to heal unless you plan on following through until he is responding correctly. Expect the first few minutes to be very awkward until your dog starts to understand this new concept of you taking him for a walk. The starting position for heal is with your dog at your left side in either a sit or down position. With your left heel in line with her front right elbow if she's down or his front right foot if he's sitting. The command for heel is your dog's name, followed by the word heel. heel. You should go into motion with your left foot first as you say your dog's name. Jet. And as your left heel hits the ground for the first time, Blitz. you should heel. simultaneously Good say heel. Good boy. Once in motion, Good stay in boy. motion. He should be trying to stay with you. Good boy. If he is, good boy. If not, no, heel. So the entire language of the heel command is your dog's name first, followed by the word heel to get her started. Lady, heel. And once you're in motion. Good girl. If she is. No, heel. If she isn't. The most important times to praise your dog are immediately following the word heel if he starts with you. Blitz, heel. Good boy, good boy. Immediately following a change in speed or direction. Good girl. Good girl, Ralph. And immediately following a correction once she begins to resume healing. No, heal. Good girl. That's a good girl. If your dog doesn't start when you do, keep moving. Bow, heal. No, heal. Good boy. At first, keep a slow, steady speed as it makes it easier to define the area your dog should be in. It will give you more time to react with a correction if needed, and your dog will have a more relaxed attitude. It's best to make left turns only initially, which will cause your dog to walk slower because in a left turn, he has to actually cover a shorter distance than you do. If you bump into your dog on a left turn because he's in the wrong position, 
the instant you make contact, say no, heal, so that he recognizes it as a correction. Practice walking in a straight line. By doing so, you will avoid the common error of drifting to compensate for your dog. Remember, you're not trying to follow her. She is supposed to be following you. Use a painted line in a parking lot if that will help. Practice figure eights with two objects placed a few feet apart. This will encompass all aspects of healing. That's the way. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I said earlier that you will want your dog to sit automatically when you stop healing. If your dog does, praise her. Good girl. But if you come to a stop and he doesn't, tell him no. Sit. Good boy. Good boy, Bo. Now, how do you signal your dog that he no longer has to heal and can resume doing what pleases him? Good After girl. you come to a stop and she sits automatically, not only praise good her, girl. but pet her as well. That's a good girl. Good girl. The most frequent error that owners make in having their dogs obey without the leash is trying to do so before their dog is close to 100% reliable on the leash. My concern is that your dog learns to consistently respect and obey you for the next 10 or 15 years, so don't rush. Most dogs are ready within four to six weeks after learning to obey the first time, almost every time you give a command. The only difference between obeying on the leash as opposed to off the leash is the inability to physically correct your dog when he doesn't obey. But by this time, your dog will want to avoid a verbal no just as much as he would a no with the snap of the leash. If your dog's attitude is developing properly while on the leash, he should obey the sit command the first time you tell him, but should never need more than one correction. She should obey stay and down, regardless of distractions, and spring into motion the instant she hears her name. And he should heal with absolutely no tension on the leash around distractions and only require an occasional correction. Obeying you off leash means that your dog must obey your voice only with no assistance from the leash. I will use a down command as an example. With your dog on the leash, command him to lie down. If he doesn't, down. tell him no but don't snap the leash. No. If he then lies down, you will know that he is ready to begin obeying without the leash because your verbal no alone was sufficient to correct him. The same goes for all the other commands. Only use a verbal correction the first time until he responds to each command the first time you command him or needing no more than one verbal no. Once this has been achieved, you can proceed without the leash. The first time you prepare to command your dog without the leash, work with him for a few minutes on the leash first. When you first attempt to work off leash, don't push him to the point of failure. Be satisfied with two or three correct responses and praise him well. A little success can go a long way, as success breeds success. Good boy, Pelo. Good boy. That's a good boy. Bear in mind that all of the words that are said when your dog is off the leash are identical to the words that are said when he is on the leash. So when he's off the leash, the sit sequence is still sit, no, sit, good boy, and not sit, 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 sit. There's an old saying, one dog year is equal to seven human years. The only message I get from this expression is that our dogs are with us for far too short a time. So give them some of your time and be generous. As you have seen, raising a great dog requires patience, knowledge, self-determination, and love. Work at it and you will end up with a companion who is truly man and woman's best friend. I wish you good luck and many happy years with your dog. Thank you.